Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and I've got something fun going on. Last night, I started a print on all of my 3D printers. In fact, I have four 3D printers. I have the Dremel 3D Idea Builder. I have the FlashForge Creator Pro. I have the GMAX 1.5 XT, and I have the 8-inch Wombat Exilus printer. I started a print on each one, and I intended the prints to go overnight. And lo and behold, they all finished successfully. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I printed. You ready? Go. You've probably noticed the video looks a little bit different and that's because I'm using a different camera. My original video camera, I've loaned out to someone because they needed to record a performance and and I, I have other cameras, so I said, sure, you could borrow my camera. So right now, you're looking at me on my Canon 1DX DSLR camera. It's a wonderful camera. I, I just don't break it out for my videos very often. What do you think of the quality? Do you like it? I, I kind of like it. This means when I go to my different printers, I, I need to take a video camera with me. I, I'm not going to take my, my 1DX with me because it's... It's, it's large and it's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't travel well for this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my iPhone camera. That's right, Poop Tractor Mobile. I'm going to use my iPhone camera to film me going to the different printers. I'll show you what it looks like on the build plate. We'll remove it from the build plate. And then once we have them all, we'll come back here and we'll talk about them. Sound good? Good. First things first, let's test to make sure that the iPhone video camera is working. Here it is. Let's see. Hello? 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 All right, the iPhone video camera is working and this camera is working, so let's get to it. All right, first up is the Wombot, and yes, my Wombot is kept in my laundry room. Why is the Wombot kept in the laundry room? Because I, I ran out of room. So here's the Wombot. This is probably the first look you're getting at it. That's the that's the filament roll at the top. There's there's the extruder assembly. This is the this is the x-axis motor. And here's all the wiring. So when I got the Wombot, it was a kit, and unfortunately, I suck at running wires, which is evident because when you look at my desk, it's just a pile of well, it's a pile of mess. That's for sure. So here's the Wombot. It's a wonderful machine. Uh, I, I need to prep a video on it as well. But but look, look at that. It's a it's a rocket ship. If you look on the front, this is actually a model created by G Create. They're the ones that created my GMAX printer. However, Gordon, the co-founder of the company, is a fantastic designer, and he created the G Create rocket ship. I did have some problems. Um, I originally printed it and. Well, one of, the, one of the legs fell off during the print and it created this wonderful floating hair like spaghetti. It's beautiful really, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, yeah. So I, I printed another one. Um, here's the leg. Here's the leg. So with the rocket ship itself, there's also the top. The top goes in like that. And there we have a completed rocket. And that was printed with the Wombot. All right. Let's grab this and take it back. All right, next up is my messy office, of course. And on the G-Max we have... Look at that. Look at that ornament. I printed a green one. And here's the green one right here. That one I, I showed off on Instagram. I showed off on Twitter. And I showed off on my Facebook page. A friend of mine, Sarah, said, Hey, Joel, I want one of those. I said, Sure, I could print you one of those. Can you print it in red? Yes. Yes, I can print it in red. Wow, look at that. I used Simplify 3D's vase mode, and so it's one continuous single perimeter all the way to the top. It's kind of crazy. Well, this model needs to come with us. Christmas yoink! Next up is the, the FlashForge Creator Pro. And, oh my goodness, it is the Sith Lord himself, Darth Vader. This is a low-poly version of Darth Vader, and, and it looks like there's a head. See, there's a head, and there's the body, and that little 
peg right there goes between the head and the body to keep it together. I think you have to glue it too. The detail, the detail on this is fantastic and it's a low poly model. There's the head. That's the helmet. That's Darth Vader's helmet right there. Look at that. All right, so you, you, and that tiny little peg. All right, you're coming with me. Last but not least, we've got the Dremel 3D Idea Builder. And look what we've got on that build plate there. Let's open that up. Ooh, that, that is the print and play stick man. It prints all as one piece, but he can, do, look at that. Yeah, he can dance. That's cool. All right, come with me, stick man. We've got four models from four printers. Now it's time to talk about them. First up is the rocket from G-Create, printed on the Wombot 8-inch Exilus printer. This is a fantastic model, and, and I'll tell you why. So it was designed by Gordon of G-Create, and he did, a, he did a wonderful job with this model, but it showcases a lot of the abilities of, of what a 3D printer can do. It creates a circle right here, right, and then these circles on the build plate, and then as it builds each one of these up, it slowly goes until it can bridge right here and connect all of the pieces together. And you saw when I showed you the, the other rocket, it, it had one of its legs fall down and you saw that kind of spaghetti hair coming off of it. That, that happens when it tries to print here and there's nothing there to hold it up. The rocket is incredibly detailed and the Wombot did a, a really good job with the detail. The G-Create logo is seen here in the window and there's a, there's a G in this window right here and it is, it is easily easily legible. Uh, the, the sides of the rocket itself, uh, there's, there's, there's a little bit of layer artifacting. Um, so the, it's interesting. So on the Wombot printer, the blower fan is on the left side of the nozzle and the blower fan blows straight down. And that's, that's by design because then you can run your fan, your fan faster and it, it's able to get out more air faster. But if you look on this model, so if this model was on the build plate, the nozzle, let's say it was here, the fan would be right here. So as the nozzle went to this side, the fan itself is never going to reach some of that filament on that side. And it did, it, it, it did an okay job with that, but you do, you do notice a difference. You do notice a difference in the quality of the layers on this side of the rocket versus this side of the rocket. It's not, Here's the interesting part. Even though it blows straight down, and I'm telling you, there's a difference in the layers, it's it's not going to be noticeable by most of the people. I, I consider myself to have a trained eye in 3D printing and 3D printing models, so I, I notice it. But if <laughs> I can hand this to my kids, and they're going to be like, yay, rocket! So it's nothing to be worried about. I guarantee it. Here's the top of the rocket. goes in the top. I could glue it if I wanted to. Or I could, I could take it out and I could use this hole to hold straws or toothpicks or tiny little Allen wrenches. Yeah, there we go. On all the G-Create Rockets, good model. I've put links down below to where you can download this. Uh, give it a try. I would love to see how you do with printing this rocket. Next, we've got the Christmas ornaments that I printed on my G Max 1.5 XT. These were both printed with ColorFab PLA. I printed at 290 degrees centigrade. The bed isn't heated, it's sanded acrylic, so I didn't have a, a heated bed temperature. And I printed at, I believe it was 80 millimeters per second. I used Simplify 3D to slice the model. And in slicing, I said to use spiral mode or vase mode. And what it does is it, it puts down the first well, however many layers you designate as the bottom layer, and then it's just one continuous loop all the way to the top. And so they're not, you can kind of hear it, they're not, there's nothing inside, there's no infill. The sides are not thick, and in fact, you can, you can move it a little bit. Uh, the color fab, the color fab filament is, is considerably stronger than, than most, and uh, it's, it's a wise choice in filament when doing something like this. I, I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think they look incredibly good. I have some glow-in-the-dark filament. I think I'm gonna try. I have also have some, some fairly clear filament, and I could build smaller ones, 
scaled down and put a light in the top and then and kind of hang them like that. That'd look kind of cool. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like these? I'll put the link down in the description so you can download this and experiment on your own printers. Next up, we've got Darth Vader. So I like Darth Vader and I found this model online. I thought I should, I should print this out. So I printed it and then I, I sent it out on Twitter and, and uh, Facebook just to kind of show people what I had printed. Um, I sent it to my friend Chris Perillo. Chris is, uh, to say he's a Darth Vader fan is nearly the understatement of the century. Uh, Chris loves Darth Vader like crazy. So I said, hey Chris, do you want me to print you a Darth Vader? And he said, yes. In fact, he said, Sith yes, which I think is even better. So this is Chris's right here. This was printed using Protopasta's carbon fiber PLA filament. It's, <laughs> it does have an amazing job. I normally, um, I, don't, I don't think of carbon fiber filaments as, as doing highly detailed work, but I printed this at 0.2 millimeter layers and it, it came out fantastic. This, this Darth Vader is, is detailed and, and it looks good and it's, it's strong. It is, it is carbon fiber strong. The little peg goes in the head and the head sits like that and then you can turn this head. You can tell, I think you can see right here at the neckline, the peg is a little too tall. So with a sharp pair of scissors, you can snip off some and, and put it back on. There we go. Of course, down in the description, I'm gonna put a link to this. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. So there's the body, there's the head, and there's the peg. I'm thinking about printing just the head, but sizing it up on my G-Max to be huge. Because who doesn't want a giant Darth Vader head, right? Right. All right, links down in the description. Print your own low poly Darth Vader. I'd love to see what you come up with. Last but not least, we've got this guy, the Print and Play Stickman. How did I find this? Well, um, on my, my Thingiverse dashboard, I think I saw my, uh, my buddy at Printed Solid had printed one for his daughter. I, I thought, hey, that looks kind of cool, and I have kids. I should print one for my kids. I, I did. I printed on the Dremel 3D Idea Creator. I printed using Dremel's PLA. I think it prints at 225 degrees centigrade. It doesn't have a heated build plate, but it's it's got a good build surface, so so it sticks really, really well. And this isn't the easiest thing to get off the build plate because it prints as one piece. Everything is individually stuck to the build plate. So even if you just free this foot toe thing, you still need to free this piece and this piece and this body and the arms and the head. It's a it's a fun little it's a fun little print. I I did print this before and <laughs> At one point I got a text from my wife and she said, should I throw this away? He had broken at the hip. And so I said, yes, because there was no putting him back together. But I could just print another. Wouldn't that be nice if you hurt yourself and you're like, ow, my leg. And you're like, I'm gonna print another. I'd go back to my protopasta machine and I'd print myself a carbon fiber leg because lighter and stronger, right? Yeah, anyway, this guy's cool. You can pose him in different ways and and have, uh, have lots of fun. Of course, the link will be down below in the description where you can get your own little print and play stick man on Thingiverse. Yeah, print one of these. It's fun. Actually, someone print this huge. I would love to see this thing tall. You up for it? There we have it. My four printers produced four prints on overnight printing sessions and the prints were, were fantastic. We had, we had the, the G-Create rocket, which looked incredible from my Wombot Exilus 8-inch printer. I, I got the Darth Vader, the low-poly Darth Vader, from my FlashForge Creator Pro using Protopasta carbon fiber filament. We got the, uh, the Christmas ornaments using ColorFab PLA on my G-Max 1.5 XT printer from G-Create. And then we got the Print and Play Stickman using Dremel filament on my Dremel 3D Idea Creator. Uh, that was fun. And these kind of videos are only gonna get more fun as I get more printers. And then all of a sudden it'll be like, let me show you the 20 things I've printed on my 20 printers. <laughs> Some people say running a printer overnight isn't optimal because you can't watch it and there's a fear for fire. Um, I've never had a problem. And in fact, I've had some pretty, <laughs> some pretty bad mess ups on my printers 
from filament getting caked around the hot end and still no fire. So I'm gonna consider myself lucky and just keep doing what I'm doing because I think it seems to be working. Well, that was a fun video. Man, I like that. I'm gonna have to do that more often. In fact, down the road, I'm gonna call for prints. I'm gonna say, hey, what should I print? Give me an overnight print. And then once I, once I get some entries in and, and everyone suggests something, I'm gonna print four or five or whatever things and then we'll discuss them on video the next day. Hopefully everything is a success. Everything is not always a success in 3D printing. However, this time we're batting a thousand and we're four for four. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Be sure to give me a thumbs up down below if you thought this was fun and informative. Subscribe to my channel. I can't stress that enough. I am this close to 5,000 subscribers and I have a very special contest for when I hit 5,000 subscribers. You won't want to miss that and the only way to be eligible for my contests is to subscribe to my channel. Hey guys. Happy days. Let's do this again sometime. As always, high five.